Hey everybody, it's Chris, and tonight's review is going to be for the Latitude 64 Gobi. Uh, it's Latitude 64's new overmold midrange. It looks similar to this, although this is a Bryce. Uh, this is the driver, so you'll be seeing that review coming up. But I can't show you the Gobi because for the first time ever in a review, I managed to lose the disc. And I'll show you the footage right here. As you can see, not the greatest pull, not my brightest moment. Uh, and actually, I really like the disc. So what you're going to see today is me throwing it in the field, in comparison to my Broken In Truth, which is my current understable midrange. Uh, and you're going to see me throwing it on the course, so you can get some different shots of it. And you're going to see Jason Wilder throwing it in the field in his commentary, and again Dan Mao throwing it in the field in his commentary as well. Uh, what can I say about the Gobi? It's a lower profile mid. It feels pretty good in the hand. It's a little awkward at first, I thought, for myself. Um, but once I, start to, once I started to click with it, I actually really like this disc. It was vying for a spot in my bag because as bad as I am at judging glide, this thing has it. I would throw this thing on a low line and it just wouldn't hit the ground. I overthrew a ton of targets. In fact, there's going to be one on the count, or one shot on the course that I'm going to point out exactly what just hap what happened. If I hadn't hit a tree, I would have overthrown the basket by probably 100 feet with just how high and fast the disc was moving. So I don't think it was was as understable as some people had said it was, but that might be a disc-to-disc -disc type thing. Um, I just don't know. But this one was very neutral. It compared well to my slightly broken in truths, uh, which are going to be uh, very similar to like an evidence or a core, uh, for how I threw cores anyway. Um, so a disc where you can count in a straight line if you don't give it too much power, but you can turn it over and it'll hold that as well. Like I said, ton of glide. I actually really like this disc. Of the three over molds, it was my favorite uh, by quite a bit. It it was vying for that understable slot in my bag right up until it hit that tree and went in the pond. So let's get to the footage so you can see how everything goes, but I really hope you enjoy this review. As always, if you have questions, please put them in the comments so I can get back to you. Um, yeah, and look forward to the Bryce coming out in a few days after after I get this one uploaded. Thanks, everybody. After watching Jason and Dan in the field, I wasn't sure how understable this disc was going to be, so I started the testing by throwing it with just a little bit of tilt on it. You can see it fades out at the end, so I was pretty sure it was going to be a fairly neutral disc. So here it is against my Flippy Truth. Both of them are going to be released in Heiser. There is a different in release angles and direction, as you can see. But the thing that really impressed me about the Gobi is when it gets that air bounce there that you saw, it just keeps going left. This throw, and it is slightly downhill, measured over 350 feet. Uh, I was just stunned by the distance it got. Alright, so course number one, Lakewood Hills. Hole three, I threw it with a little bit of hyzer, thinking it would flip up and stay straight, but again, neutral disc, holds that hyzer line, fades out to the left. The second throw is one of those really low throws I was talking about. Usually in a throw like this, you can expect to be 50 feet short on this little crest of a hill, but this was 30 feet long. On this one, this is another one where I threw downhill and I was expecting it to bury a little bit quicker, but it held its line long enough to stay on that hill and end up pin high. This is a big up and around Anheuser, and this disc held beautifully. It goes up into the blue sky and then crashes through the tree and was it actually gave me an ace run. Now in the commentary I talked about the shot where the distance was just crazy. You can see where I'm aiming the wood chips up there past a few of those trees. This disc hits the tree behind the basket at the top and drops down in putting range. Otherwise, it would have been way past. On to our second park, Acorn. This was supposed to be a, just a little bit harder of a turnover. You can see I didn't give it quite enough. It's going to fade out at the end. I think if I'd given it just a little more power, it would have been right up by the pin. But great performance for the way I threw it. Here's a shot I usually throw a putter on. You can see you just give it 80% power. It holds that very straight line and then gets the luckiest skip ever. So here's Jason Wilder in the field. This is his first Gobi throw, reduced power, height, with a hyzer release, and it holds that hyzer beautifully. And his second throw is going to be a little bit lower, a little higher power, but again, you will see because of that hyzer release, it's going to hold, which led me to believe it was a very neutral disc. Here you get to see him against his normal understable mid-range, the Warrant. Jason's really good with his Warrants. He holds a good line with them. He can manipulate them well. And here you can see the Gobi's just quite a bit more overstable than his warrant is. And you get a second run of that here. Different line, similar results where the Gobi is going to come out of it, uh, whereas the warrant is more of a turnover disc. The 
the Gobi, under stable mid-range from Latitude. For me, this one is supposed to be an understable mid-range. I threw it against my Dynamic Disc Warrant, and I found this one to be a little bit more stable. Um, I didn't get it to turn over. I was throwing with a bit of a tailwind. Uh, I didn't get it to turn over, and maybe it's my throwing style, but it just, it was nice and straight, or even a little overstable for me. Um, don't know that I would throw it, but it's definitely a reliable disc. Dan drew the short stick and got to throw the goby into the headwind. And so on this first throw you're going to see why we were questioning if the goby was super understable. But what it comes down to is Dan did release this with a slight Anheuser tilt and with a neutral disc uh, that is going to cause it to turn over pretty hard. So on the second throw when you see the comparison he's going to throw it a little bit flatter. It's going to get some height but it never turns over quite as hard. You can see it flip up but it is going to just stay fairly straight with just maybe a touch of fade but fairly flat finish. Like I said, neutral disc. And here are some thoughts from Dan. Uh, the Gobi was a pretty good, understable mid-range. Um, it it seemed like it would hold a, a nice Anheuser line. Uh, you could make it fly straight. It's a pretty good touch disc. Um, once again, for for newer players, people with a lot of touch and control, I think that'll be a great disc. As we wrap up this review, we'll once again watch the Gobi meet its watery fate. It is a neutral to understable mid-range. It loves to hold a line, and it has a fantastic glide. I hope this review was helpful, informative, possibly humorous. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, share it, or even subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.